Okay, wh what is this? Nothing. There's no one in here. I see. Just a box, then. Aha! I fooled you, brother. Now you must play the Twin Snakes. What? Okay, so what, you have a GameCube then? Why, it's in the box! It's in the box. It's in the box. <sighs> oh. Au revoir, brother! For over a decade now, I've been hearing people talk about how the Metal Gear Solid 1 remake on the GameCube, Twin Snakes, is a bonkers, over-the-top mess which is generally inferior to its PS1 counterpart. I joined the series a little late, and until recently I had never owned a Nintendo console, so there was just no practical way for me to even try it. But recently my curiosity just got the better of me, and I wanted to experience it firsthand to see what was causing all the fuss. The first game is probably the one that I've played the least and I needed to refresh my memory, so I played both games back to back to see how they really stack up to each other. I should note first that I played Metal Gear Solid 1 on PC, which had a few differences like the lack of a need for disc swapping and having to suddenly learn how to play on keyboard to defeat Psycho Mantis, but for the most part it was business as usual. And our first point of comparison is actually going to be the gameplay, which is somewhat favorable for the Twin Snakes. The game was released in 2004 after Sons of Liberty, and the developer Silicon Knights decided to implement the mechanics from the sequel into this remake. This includes things like rolling, ledge hopping, and blood loss. Not to mention the ability to move with the analog stick, which I think you could do in MGS1 on the PS3, but on PC I was stuck with the old analog buttons. The new mechanics were actually sort of frustrating at first, particularly in the opening section before the elevator. I figured, oh this will be pretty easy, I just did this in the original. But then I start crawling under the first pipe and I get spotted because the sightlines of the guards go way past where the radar indicates. So I wait for him to buzz off and I start making my way to the elevator and he heard me step in this puddle. That's new. Okay, I'll just hide over here and he can see my wet footprints. Okay, I've set off two alerts but everything's chill again. I'll just hide over here by the forklift and it's smaller and pushed closer to the wall. I digress. After getting past this area and having more tools at my disposal, I had an easier time getting past guards, although some stuff still did bother me at times, the sight cones in particular. They really should be way bigger. Twin Snakes generally feels a lot better to play. The original game felt kind of stiff and clunky. You were essentially only able to move in four directions, technically eight, and you're not even able to walk. You're either standing still or running. And I don't blame Kojima or his staff, that's just the game being a product of its time. It didn't have tank controls at least. But still, Twin Snakes feels generally better. There are even improved camera angles in some areas that give you a better sense of the space you're moving through. Plus the aforementioned ledge hopping is occasionally helpful in cutting down on the distance you have to travel. While moving around undetected may be kind of a pain in the ass, combat is actually piss easy in comparison to the first game. The bosses are the big giveaway here. Bosses like Rex and Psycho Mantis, even some of the group enemy encounters really tested my mettle the first time around, and I was desperately trying to hold onto my rations to keep myself alive. And then in the Twin Snakes, I absolutely spanked everyone, Meryl included. Ah. I did play both games on normal difficulty, so maybe bumping it up to hard would remedy this a bit. I should also mention they made no-kill runs easier with the addition of a tranquilizer gun, though if I'm honest, I never found it, and I had no reservations about murder. I mean, they're all clones anyway. There are also some slight alterations in a few areas, and honestly, they're so sparse I had to wonder why they bothered changing things at all. Things like adding this little ditch in the snowfield, or putting guards in this room that used to only have cameras. They did merge all the bespoke areas in Rex's hangar, which I thought was a good addition, made it feel more like one singular room. But I think it's about time we address the cutscenes. <gasps> If you've even heard of the Twin Snakes, chances are you've heard how ridiculous and over the top it is. Well, now that I've played both games back to back, I can say...
yeah, it's kind of goofy, and there are definitely some questionable additions. But even so, I feel that maybe some people forget that some of the ridiculous stuff in this game actually happened in the original as well. Like this scene, when Ocelot shoots the PAL card out of Snake's hand over in a different direction over this railing, and this does no damage to the keycard. That said, Silicon Knights did add a number of little sequences in various scenes that were unnecessary and usually goofy. The story goes that Silicon Knights and film director Ryuhei Kitamura made Twin Snakes cutscenes to basically reflect the original game's cutscenes at a higher fidelity. But apparently Kojima had a look at these scenes and felt that they should be redone in Kitamura's signature style. So that's how he ended up with bullet dodging flips, other random acrobatics, and enough whooshes to fill up a wind tunnel. As much as I wanted to give this stuff a fair shake, I was almost always taken out of any scene where this stuff reared its head, and a lot of it made me laugh out loud because of how ridiculous it was. Silicon Knights didn't fundamentally alter any scenes, but they would be better off by removing 99% of these scene additions. I think there were one, maybe two scenes with additional content that felt like good additions. That said, there were some scenes that benefited greatly from the enhanced graphics and animation. The best example would be the entire sequence from when you find Meryl in the bathroom until you defeat Psychomantis. The visual fidelity and improved animations made it easier to see them as real humans and made their dynamic a lot more engrossing to see unfold. Special mention to Fox's death and the fistfight scene with Liquid. Those are also pretty nice in the remake, although they are also a bit goofy at certain moments. The codec is more or less unchanged aside from a blue background and the fact that you have to press a combination of buttons to open it. Anyway, I really appreciate that they decided to stick with the Shinkawa portraits for the codec calls. This was one of my gripes with the second game when they switched to just having the character models in the window instead. I just think for this format it's nicer to look at this beautiful, iconic artwork. Honestly, codec calls have always been something of a weak point in my opinion. Just a bunch of audio conversations sandwiched between these grand cutscenes, and sometimes they go on for a while. Getting a little off topic, but suffice it to say the codec in Twin Snakes is pretty damn similar to MGS1, though the voices of most characters have changed in some way. Snake's voice, for example, in the first game was a little more subtle and less gruff than in all of the following games. In the remake, he has the version of Snake's voice we all came to love in the following games. But I don't know, in comparison, it just felt a little less natural and out of place in this game. Well, if that's all, it's nothing to worry about. I want to ask you something. I need information about Metal Gear. And most of the cast have at least subtly different performances in some way. Most notably, Naomi, Mei Ling, and Nastasha having more American accents, and Gray Fox having a new voice actor, i.e. not the same actor as the Arms Tech president. But for the most part, these differences aren't really better or worse, just different. We did lose this particular gem, though. Snake! Rest in peace. While we're talking about sound, I have to mention the music. I remember when I finally got past the first encounter and started ascending the elevator, I was excited to see Snake's big reveal in this new engine. But this is not what was playing. Instead, it was this. I'm not entirely sure why, but they opted to create an entirely new soundtrack for this game, and I just found it really underwhelming and generic for the most part. And I was just really missing the classic songs. Going into the alert phase was just not the same in Twin Snakes. There's a reason that some of the original game's tracks are still so widespread and well known even to this day. Honestly, I was prepared to sit here and tell you that Twin Snakes gets a bad rap and sing its praises, and while it certainly has its good qualities, there's just too much stuff holding it back from being an overall better experience than the original. I doubt I'll be playing it again. But at the same time, I do think it's worth experiencing, though obtaining a GameCube and a copy of the game is a bit... prohibitive. But there are other ways. But if you're able to, I would recommend experiencing the game for yourself. After all, it's not all that long, and there are some good moments to be found. I'll catch you in the next one.